Fabrizio Romano has confirmed that clubs have to bite the bullet this summer, sell players they don't want to sell in order to stay on the right side of FFP and PSR rules. Arsenal are not any different from any other clubs like Aston Villa, who have sold Douglas Lewis for a ridiculous 28 million euros plus two youngsters from Juventus. And Arsenal are going to find themselves in a very difficult situation uh, this summer where we have players like Zichenko, uh, Gabriel Jesus, Thomas Partey that we would love to keep, but should good offers arrive, do we sell? Or do we actually keep them? That is the purpose of this video. In this video, I discuss the difficult decisions Arsenal have to make in this summer, including Ramsdale, including players like Edin Ketia. Do you sell despite the fact that you don't get a striker or do you actually keep him until you get a new striker next summer? Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel as well. This one might annoy a few people because I'm going to talk about your favorite players, but that is all I do. All I do is talk about arsenal and i love arsenal let's start off with thomas Partey. now arsenal looking to sign a number six Partey is earning big big wages one of the top earners at the side and one of the most important players when it comes to Mikel Arteta's system and the way we play my problem with thomas Partey has always been his availability he's a very very injury prone player and although I've, I've said time and again that if arsenal cannot find a good replacement for thomas Partey, uh, you keep him and i still stand by my words if we are signing onana if we're signing Zubimendi, if we're signing Jordan Nevis, if we're signing Yusuf Afana, we must keep Thomas Partey. The reason is I don't think any of those players is at the level of Thomas Partey, number one. But also number two, when you think about Thomas Partey, what do you think about? Experience, pedigree, um, leadership, and a winner who has won elsewhere so if arsenal are really looking to uh, you know have winners in the team you can't replace uh, you know partner with Ahmad onana however if arsenal can get to your image and this is um uh, one of the very smartest you know deals we could actually do and i think it will it will still be uh, a very difficult decision for Mikel to make do you bring in Yosha Kimmich and let go of Thomas Partey? Now, Kimmich is one of the top earners at Bayern. He's coming in at Arsenal. He's going to be, he's going to want to earn, uh, you know, around 230 to 260,000 per week. I think for me, at 29 years of age, Kimmich at DM can win Arsenal the league. And it's a signing. It's, if you ask me one signing that definitely wins Arsenal the league, it's Joshua Kimmich. More durable. He's got the legs. He's um, you know, a physical fighter, in my opinion. And his mentality is of winner and top-notch. So, Pate, if Arsenal can raise 20 million in this window, and we are sure that we are going to get Joshua Kimmich because he has already said, among my top five destinations, Arsenal is already there. If Arsenal can convince me uh, you know, to join them, pay my wages, get an agreement with Bayern, I will actually join them. So for me, Thomas Partey, if we can get Joshua Kimmich, if we can get a 29-year-old player that replaces most of the aspects that we get in Thomas Partey, but progression, uh, you know, creativity from deep, leadership experience a winning mentality i would let thomas Partey go but that is the condition if you're not giving me kimmich if you're not giving me a player like laudry kimmich in that bracket i wouldn't truly really sell thomas Partey. and that 25 million pounds or euros depending on what um arsenal will agree on uh, would be such a very good deal if you could offload a player that is injury prone and you replace him with a player that is more durable for the same um, uh, you know, amount of money. The advantage with Kimmich is that he's got one year left on his deal. Bayern are willing to let him run, uh, run his contract down. So you, you could talk to them. 18 million, 19 million, 20 million, 21 million. Or you know, a fee in that region could get the deal done. So I think one of the, one of the situations where Arsenal are going to have to uh, really, really think a lot is the Thomas Partey, you know, uh, situation. Do you add another midfielder and keep Thomas Partey? That means you're keeping his wages and you're adding more wages to his wages, right? Do you keep Jorginho, uh, Partey, um, you know, uh, Jorginho, Partey, and add another midfielder? In my opinion, no. You offload one of them, and that has got to be Thomas Partey if we can get Joshua Kimmich. The next player on this list, again, like I said, I'm going to annoy some, some of you is Leandro Trossard. So Leandro Trossard has, uh, has definitely had one of the best seasons uh, you know, uh, you know, at Arsenal, in an Arsenal jersey, scoring 
12 goals and assisting around five times. That is around 17 goal contributions for Arsenal just in the Premier League. Obviously, he was phenomenal for us during our uh, Champions League season. But we are talking a 29-year-old, 30-year-old Leandro Trossard that is in form, on fire. What if an offer comes in? What if an offer arrives? Do we cash in on him? Or do we actually keep him? Now, this is what I'm going to say with Leandro Trossard. I would sell Leandro Trossard. And listen to me. Listen to me. Leandro Trossard is a very, very important part of this Arsenal team. A clutch player that is not going to ask for a lot of minutes. A clutch player that you are sure, with Gabriel Martinelli in and out, out of form, with Saka picking up the, you know, those injuries, and Kai Havertz now being the only striker that is uh, reliable for Arsenal, Leandro Trossard can play across that forward line, and you get the same amount of value, um, you know, when he plays in each of the, you know, in, in each of the positions. He can also drop into that number eight position. So it's not a very, very easy decision for us to say get rid of Leandro Trossard. But this is why I think Arsenal might actually be, be, be able to get rid of uh, Trossard, sell him at the right price if the right offer comes in, get on the, uh, you know, get uh, the books right, and then also replace him well. Let's talk about a player like Eberechi Eze. And, uh, and of course, Eze is not just a winger. Eze uh, is a player who can play in the eight, in the 10, on the right wing, and also on the left wing as well. Just a little bit like a Trossard. Now, he doesn't score as many goals as Leandro Trossard, but, of course, he creates more chances than Leandro Trossard. Eberich Eze is young, he's English. That, uh, you know, helps you with the number of English players and homegrown players in the squad. That is, um, you know, a key part of, um, of what Arsenal should be looking to do uh, this summer. I, when I think about it, when I think about it, I'm forced to go... We can go and get rid of Trossard for around 30 million if there is a club willing to pay 30 million or 25 million and trigger the release clause of a player like Eberti Eze, who's got, of course, longevity. His contract can be amortized for, for, for six, seven years, um, and we will be all right. So, again, for me, Leandro Trossard next year or the, the year after that. Arsenal will be getting rid of him anyway uh, for around maybe 5 million or 10 million. So if a good offer came in this summer, Saudi Arabia-esque offers, I would cash in on Leander Trossard. That is going to be unpopular. That is going to be unpopular. Next on the list is Gabriel Jesus. Now, I've worked with Glenn for a long time. Like, really a long time. Since this channel was created, one of the first people I worked with, one of the first persons I worked with on this channel was Glenn. And Glenn loves, uh, you know, loves Gabriel Jesus. But for me with Gabriel Jesus, the situation is not different from Thomas Partey. And actually with Gabriel Jesus, I would sell him and not replace him right away. You know, with Gabriel Jesus... We always talk about his versatility. We always talk about his energy. We always talk about his quality um, and, and this and that. But last season and the season before that, there was one common theme that I didn't like about him. He is never clinical in front of goal. Now, unless Arsenal are saying we're not going to sign um, a new winger, we are going to have Gabriel Jesus play as our new winger, left-hand side and also on the right-hand side. But if Arsenal are looking to sign Eze, and Arsenal are also looking to sign Nico Williams Jr. And P or Pedro Neto. That means that Mikel is looking to strengthen in the wide areas. And Mikel is looking to strengthen, uh, you know, in midfield with Eze, Onana, and, uh, you know, Williams. So the question is, where does uh, Gabriel Jesus now come in? That's my question. And I know um, it's about squads. It's not about positions. Um, you know, a player can rise through the ranks in the, you know, in the squad and then go down, things like that. But does he start at Arsenal right now? Does he really start ahead of Gabriel Martinelli and Trossard on the left? No. Does he start ahead of Saka? No. Does he start ahead of Kai Havers? No. And is he a player that you bring on to win you a game? He changes games. He really, really does. But for me... If Arsenal at 2 0 down, he comes on. I don't think we go to 2 2. I think we can go to 2 1. And, and again, he's a player that you don't want your best chances to fall to. So, why would you give a player that you don't want your best chances to fall to 260K a week and keep him 
even when he's injury prone at the moment. So for me, with Gabriel Jesus, if a good offer arrives, Arsenal have to make the decision, and that decision is to sell. Now, of course, um, you know, this is his third season out of a five-year deal, so you've got to give him that time, you've got to give him uh, that patience, that, uh, you know, window, and see how he actually does. But that is if, a, you know, a magnificent offer doesn't come in. If Arsenal can get 50 million right now for Gabriel Jesus, sell him. Because you don't know what's going to happen. And I, I, I might actually come back to this video later on in the, in the season where I apologize or I say, I told you so. Because, listen, if it doesn't work out for a, a second successive season, Arsenal will be saying, we wish we moved him on last summer and we brought in a proper winger or a proper forward, right? So for me, Gabriel Jesus, good offer comes in, good offer arrives, I would sell him. I think if you cannot, uh, you know, compete with Kai Havers, who is not even a natural forward, if you cannot compete with Edin Ketia in terms of, uh, you know, being available and in terms of, uh, you know, importance to the team, I might have to say, brutally, you are done with Arsenal. Next on the list is ESR, Emil Smith Rowe. This one has divided a lot of op opinions. Um, I'm one of the people that think ESR has to leave Arsenal for his own benefit. On the side of Arsenal, we've got to keep him. We've got to do whatever it takes to keep him. But in terms of the player, you've got to sell. Right? I mean, you've got to move on. If you want to play at the World Cup, if you want to play at the next Euros, if you want to compete with Jude Bellingham, uh, you know, which is very difficult, by the way, for England right now, um, Phil Foden, uh, the likes of, uh, you know, Anthony Gordon, Saka, you've got to start playing football right now. And regular football and serious football. Now, he is a serious talent. ESR, no question about that. And this Arsenal squad would massively, massively benefit from him. Massively benefit from him. If he was fit and if he was, um, you know, on form. But again, he's another player that I've got to say, I don't see him fit into this Mikel Arteta system anymore. I don't see him be as important as he was to Arsenal two years, you know, two years ago. In that title, uh, you know, title winning season, ESR didn't really contribute that much. Last season, ESR didn't really contribute that much, right? So in the last two seasons, he's not contributed that much. And in those, in, in those last two seasons, Arsenal have developed a core system. A system made of Gabriel Martinelli, Odegaard, Rice, uh, Partey, Gugino, um, you know, Saka, and a couple of other players. Unless there is a massive injury crisis at Arsenal, I don't see Emil Smith Pro, uh, you know, revive his career in the Arsenal colours. But in black and white at Christ uh, Crystal Palace, at Newcastle, I, I wouldn't want him to go to Crystal Palace. I would want him to go to Aston Villa or Newcastle. So for me, ESR is one of the players that Arsenal are sure they can get 30 and above million. 30 and above. It shouldn't be 30 or below. It should be 30 and above, right? We should be looking to break our transfer record, which, uh, which is at around, you know, 35 million. We should be selling Emil smith for around 36 uh, million to 56 million, around there. So for me, again, Arsenal have a decision to make. He's one of the assets that can give us good money, this summer, do you sell? Do you keep? For me, I would sell Emil Smith Rowe. Moving on. Part of the squad, um, very frustrated, Aaron Ramsdale. I think with Ramsdale, we think it's um, a straightforward decision. But there are three options here. Ramsdale could refuse leaving, uh, leaving Arsenal, which is um, very unlikely. Secondly, clubs might refuse paying what we want. Thirdly, Ramsdale and his entourage might request Arsenal to send him out on loan. He leaves, but he leaves on loan. Bullshit. I think with Ramsdale, the difficult decision is, do Arsenal accept, you know, offers below 25 million? Or do we actually keep him for one more season, maybe send him out on loan, regard regardless of what we do with him, and see whether his price can go up a little bit? For me, with Ramsdale... I would send him out on loan, 
listen to this. I would send him out on loan because I know he's a good goalkeeper and he's good enough to start for so many clubs in the Premier League. So send him out on loan to a, to a, to a club that you see he will start. He will start at least 25 games, right? He will do well in those championship clubs. He will do well um, in those um, uh, relegation-threatened clubs. And we will be able to sell him for around 30, 35 million after he's played the whole season. Right now, I think we're not going to get good money. Tomiyasu is next on my list. Difficult decision with Takeru Tomiyasu. Difficult decision with Jakub Kibio. Difficult decision with Oleksandr Zichenko. Let's handle them together. Zichenko, oh, good offer comes in. Um, around 25 million to 30 million. Sell. Uh, there is no question there. Sell. Takeru Tomiyasu is the one that is interesting because clubs have actually wanted him, uh, including Bayern, actually. Even Bayern wanted him. So that sh shows you the level uh, of this boy. Juventus wants him. Napoli want him. Takeru Tomiyasu, no, you don't sell, right? Unless it is mind-blowing, like 50 million, you don't sell. Kivio is one out sell. If Arsenal are given 35 million or 30 million for Jakub Kivio, Look, we've got to sell at the end of the day. So Kivio outsell. The players outsell without asking myself any questions. Lukonga, sell. Tavares, sell. Zichenko, sell. Edinketia, sell. Now Edinketia obviously has um, you know, we have a conversation, we have to have a conversation around Eddie. If Arsenal don't sign a striker, any striker, we will be left with two strikers, right? Edinketia and Kai Havers. Gabriel Jesus. He doesn't want to score goals, so he's not a striker. So do you sell your second striker without signing a new striker? Because for me, signing Sahu Girassi, I would rather keep my Eddie Nketiah. Big up to you, Eddie. I would rather keep you than sign Sahu Girassi. Okay? So let me know what you would you, would you do uh, with those difficult decisions. And I know I'm going to get a lot of abuse and stick on this one, but I have a thick skin. See you soon.